In this video, we're going to be taking a look on pages PowerPoint 34 and 35 in which we're going to rearrange and merge shapes. After watching this video, you should be able to reorder shapes and combine shapes together. Every object on a slide, whether it's a shape, a picture, a text object, or any other object, is placed or stacked on the slide in order it was created, like pieces of paper piled or placed on top of one another. Each object on a slide can be moved up or down in the stack depending on how you want the objects to look on the slide. Merging shapes, which combines multiple shapes together, provides you the potential to create a variety of unique geometric shapes that are not available in the shapes gallery. Let's now take a look at step one on page of PowerPoint 34, in which it first of all tells us that we want to click GASP in the text object. So we're going to click on GASP here. And then we're going to position our mouse pointer over the right middle sizing handle uh, over here. So we're going to go to the right middle sizing handle until it changes uh, into a double headed arrow. Then next it tells us that we want to drag this sizing handle to the left until the right border of the text object is under the first word in the text uh, or the title text object. which is right over here. Now the width of the text objects decreases. Now when you position your mouse pointer over a sizing handle, you'll notice that it changes to a double-headed arrow. This pointer it, um, points in different directions depending on which sizing handle it is over. And of course we can go on a little bit further because we want this underneath the first word in the title text object, so we can always go just a little bit further to where it's underneath Atlantic. So we're freeing up this whole other space so we can add in some different uh, objects as well. Next, in step two, it tells us that we want to click the More button in the Drawing Group. So we're going to go up here to our Drawing Group and we're going to click on the More button here. And of course this has all the different shapes. And of course now we're going to click on the diamond button in the basic shape section. So we have the basic shapes here. And here is the diamond uh, selection. So when we click on that, that's going to select it there. Then it tells us then drag down and to the right to create a shape. So we're going to go from here and we're just going to click and make this shape roughly close to about this right here. Uh, you can look on uh, page uh, PowerPoint 35 on figure B-9 and this should roughly be what your object looks like. If it's not exactly, that's okay, just as long as it's pretty close. Once we have that, compare your screen to what you see on this screen or on figure B-9 and you'll notice that a diamond shape appears on the slide filled with the default theme color. You can move shapes by dragging them on the slide. On step three, we are going to drag this diamond shape over the circle shape. So we're going to click on this and we're going to drag this diamond shape and we're going to put it over top of the circle shape. And then we're going to use the smart guides that appear uh, to position the diamond shape in the center of the circle shape where the guides intersect. So we notice that there is, um, right now if I would have it up at the top, uh, notice how there is a red line that's in the middle and that's telling me that I'm in the center of this. And if I move it on down just a little bit, notice how there's kind of a cross here that's telling me that I'm right in the center of the circle. When I release my mouse button, it's telling me that that diamond is in the center of the circle uh, that's on there. And of course, smart guides help you position objects relative to each other and determine equal distances between the objects. Now, of course, if your smart guides do not appear, and that could be some trouble, you can always right-click a blank area of the slide and then point to Grid and Guides, which if you would just right-click here and go to Grid and Guides, and then, of course, make sure that this is checkmarked right here where it says Smart Guides. Next, on Step 4, it tells us that we want to click the Select button in the Editing Group. So here we're in the Editing Group, and we're going to click on Select. Next, it tells us that we want to click Selection Pane, which is down here at the bottom. It's the bottom option. And of course, we have now opened up our Selection Pane. 
and this is allowing us to see the different options that are uh, different objects that we do have notice we have our title one that was the first thing that was on there then we have our content placeholder that was the second object that was on there then we added our oval which is our circle was the third thing that's on there and finally the diamond which is the last thing so if you can imagine those things as four pieces of paper uh, the title is the first thing, contents the second thing, so those were the different order, uh, the, that was the order of items that we placed them in. But once we have this, it tells us that now, it tells us to click the send backwards button in the selection pane once. And of course, here we have the bring forward and send backwards. And of course, we want to make sure that our diamond shape is selected. Once we have that, we're going to click on the back button, uh, the send backwards button. And once we do that, the selection pane, which has already opened on the right side of the window, showing the four objects on the slide, and the order they are stacked on the slide. Now the send backward and the bring forward button lets you change the stacking order. Now you'll notice that the diamond shape moves back one position in the stack behind the circle shape. In step five, it tells us that we want to press and hold our shift key on our keyboard and then click the circle shape on the slide. Then you can release your shift key on your keyboard and what that does is that is going to select both shapes. Then next we can go and click the drawing tools format tab and which is on the ribbon and then we can click the merge shapes button in the insert shapes group. So over here, here's the insert uh, shapes, and here's the merge shapes. Now we do have some options. We have union, combine, fragment, intersect, and subtract. And on this case, we want to point to union. So we click on, uh, we point to union on there. So I'll undo this here for us. We can point to union, and we see that that's what it would appear like on there. And it says the two shapes appear to merge or combine together to form one shape. Now the merge shape assumes the theme and formatting style of the diamond shape because it was selected first. Next, in step six, it tells us that we want to move our mouse pointer over the merge shape options to review the effect of the shape. So if we go to combine, this will show us what it would look like if it would be combined uh, on there. Uh, of course, fragment intersect and also of course subtract as well. Next once we have that it tells us to click a blank area of the slide twice and then once we do that uh, on there of course that is going to go ahead and um, deselect that then we want to go through and click on the diamond shape again and just the diamond shape as well. Then next we're going to click on the bring forward button and that is going to bring that diamond forward. Uh, we want to click on that once. And then next uh, on there tells us that we are now going to go through uh, and of course we're going to click that bring forward list arrow in the arrange group on the drawing tools format tab. Uh, on there so we could go to the range and we can also go to bring forward as well uh, that is another um, area to do that uh, so you can either go to your selection pane on there or if it is backwards on that you can also go through there and um, click on the bring forward list arrow where we have the bring forward and then of course uh, bring forward uh, on there as well we can click bring forward and that would do the same thing as clicking on this button as well so there's two different ways of doing that next once we have that we move on to step seven in which it tells us that we are now going to go ahead and click on the circle shape and then press and hold our shift key and then we're going to click on the diamond shape so we're selecting these two objects again and then we're going to go back to our click merge shapes button and that's in our insert shapes group and this time we're going to go ahead and point to union again and of course now notice that instead of having the green color we now have the blue color that's on there because the merge shape adopts the theme and formatting style of the circle shape because the circle shape was the one that we clicked on first uh, on there and of course a quick tip as well to move an object 
uh, to the top of the stack, you can click the bring forward button and then click the bring uh, and then click bring to the front. And of course, to move an object to the bottom of the stack, you can always click uh, the send to the backward arrow and then click on send to back. Of course, once we point to the union, this was what this would look like. Then also it tells us in step eight, we want to point to each of the merge shape options. So we can take a look at those different options. But finally, we want to go to subtract. And that is the button that we do want to cl uh, click on. Once we have that, we notice that the two shapes merge into one shape. This merge option deletes the area of all shapes from the first shape you selected. So in this case, uh, the area of the diamond shape is deleted from the circle shape and the merge shape is identified as freeform 6, which we see that over here in the selection pane. Finally, in step 9, it tells us that we want to click the selection pane button in the arrange group, which is right here. And of course that will close the selection pane. And then you can click on a blank area of the slide to deselect the shape. And then finally go ahead and save your work. Now on page PowerPoint 35, it talks a little bit about changing the size and proportion of shapes. And usually when you resize a shape, you can simply drag one of the sizing handles around uh, the outside of the shape. But sometimes you may need to resize a shape more precisely. When you select a shape, the Drawing Tool Format tab appears on the ribbon, offering you many different formatting options, including some sizing commands located in the size group. The width height commands in the size group allows you to change the width and height of a shape. You also have the option to open the format shape pane which allows you to change the shape of, or the size of a shape as well as the rotation, scale, and position of the shape on the slide. And that concludes the information on pages PowerPoint 34 and 35 in which we rearrange and merge shapes. In the next video we're going to be editing and duplicating shapes.